our students, the art teachers back in the classroom. Brian Proctor here with another lesson. And this is another action post position of the week, number 40. And truth be told, I've been looking at some uh, Dragon Ball last week. And so I said to myself, why not? Let's go. Okay, let's see if we can get a little Goku action going here. A little Dragon Ball Z position. So, first thing you want to do is always, always mark off your edges where you don't want to come out of. You always should have a border so that nothing comes. You can go up. So, if you go up a little too far, you still have a little extra space to, to not go off the page. Because when I first started drawing, I always had a leg or foot going off the page because I started with the head. But now I know enough to start with the torso. So, all right, so we're going to do torso about right here. I don't want to get too dark because his hands are going to be in front of him. So, uh, we'll turn them a little bit. So, we're going to turn that line here and twist it here. And basically, what you want to do is get a rough, you get a rough um, meaning like, let's just say, um, a rough like this on your paper that way you'll know what the character is going to basically position like and then you say you come back with your detail saying saying or doing torso your center line your uh, tuna can your upside down house your leg your other leg like that because you already have the rough and you know where like the hand is going the other hand the head and just make some adjustments as you go along but that's what you should do is always do a rough and that way you won't go off your page but I've been doing it long enough that I, I won't go off now watch me go off okay so torso and I'll move a little faster because every time I <clears throat> every time I draw slow it becomes a little uh, stiff <clears throat> I don't know why I am choking up here because I just had a little chocolate cookie. Your leg here, your leg here. And you always step away. Once you get your, your uh, semi sort of finished drawing together, you always step away for at least 10 to 15 minutes to make sure you have your stuff right, your proportions and other things. Switch pencils, that pencil always hits me in the finger, the edge of the finger, and it bugs you after a while. So when I do the rough, I'll come back on the separate sheet and then I'll show you exactly what I did because I know people are like, he, he's going fast again. He's going fast again and I cannot keep up. So shoulders, and he's going to have one hand higher than the other. So you tilt those shoulders like a bot. And twist it over a little bit more. So here is the head. And the head is actually going to come down into the, because he's leaning over, the head is going to come down into the shoulders. Normally, you would do this. You have your shoulders and your neck and your head up. But when you lean them forward shall we say or in a crouching position here's your shoulders your head comes down like that and the more it comes down the more kind of crouching position you are in so your shoulders going to be way up here your shoulders going to be like way up here whereas like down here versus here is your shoulders here so yeah whenever you attack your shoulders have to come down chest comes up Stomach comes around, your um, upside down house or your waist actually goes behind. If I did the whole thing, this part would be behind his abs and then your legs. But the key part is having, having this triangle shape and then having the head down into the shoulders. So I said I was going to show you what I just did. Let me show you what I just did. All right, as I say. Uh, torso first, center line, he could be turned this way, he could be going straight, or he could be going that way, which he is going that way. 
So you always have your waist here, which is just basically this, like that, a tuna can, as I always say, to those who know what I'm saying. And then your upside down house, which is just this, your hips, your crotch. If I turn it over, it'll be an upside down house. Then your legs come off each one. Depending on how much of a, um, a crouch he could be, his leg could be way up here somewhere, or it could be way down there. That choice is yours. It could be up on his foot, could be up on something. And his foot could be down, down off of something. And then, as I said, when you when you do the head, instead of having the head up here, bring the head down here. It gives him that leaning over look. He's leaning towards you. So, all right. This is a given right here. You have your, your, your neck is going to be here. The point of your neck is right where that line is going to be at. It's going to, your, your neck should be, when drawing the neck, the neck should be, here is your shoulder blade. Shoulder blade. Why do I keep calling it that? That's like the delts. I got the delts down. Your collarbone at this little dip here you should have that V there straight up it's like a, a more narrower narrower or pointier roof upside down house then you have your shoulders here then you have your head on top of that or coming down into it like that you always want it you want your chin to come down into your neck so just a more of a narrow house but wherever that center line is that's where that V well, that narrow house should be a more pointed roof house, aka the neck. So, because his head is down more, and I might bring it down more, you won't see it. But here's that point right here, and then your collar, collar don't you say collar? Yeah, collarbone, don't you say collarbone? So, this is a given because you know your shoulder, your delts are here and here. So, now the face. We put a hand right here, not covering the face up too much. And I was going to say the hand could be as big as you want, but you don't want like overgrown big hands like this because that's way out of proportion. You can do it, but it's way out of proportion. And let's just say I want another hand about here. Maybe a little bigger. Now, when doing the hands, you notice I did a square. Both of them basically a square. I wouldn't say rectangle. Split it in half. You have your palm. You have your thicker palm that comes into your thumb. Your thumb is connected to that. And then you have your, your other half of your palm which comes up into your baby finger. Same thing here. This is when it's upside down. You have that thicker palm and the other one that comes into your baby finger. So, your thumb is connected to that fatter part of the palm. So, we have this little square piece right here, and then this little piece right there. Your fingers are going to be one, two, three, four. Uh, same thing here. You have this little piece here. Can you see that? Let's, let's switch the pencil. I have a dark pencil which I don't. Well, let's try this one. The part, bad part about doing it in these pencils is the glare from the lead. You might be able to see it. I don't know if I can see it in the monitor. Here's th the thumb. The thumb. And then, of course, this curves around. And so does this. Now I'm going to stop the hand. You want to curve that too. And then do the arm. Because when you place the hands, um, determine where you're going to place the rest of the arm. Arm. And you already have this and this. As I said, that's a given. So from here, let's say this is where your wrist is in here. That's going to come back out. It's going to get bigger come out to about right here 
and you really won't see the bicep. You might see a piece of the bicep somewhere in there, maybe. This is why I don't always draw with one color because it's harder to see when I keep adding to it. It's hard to see. So I usually do everything in red pencil and then when I want to add to it or correct it or change something, then I will um, use a pencil, a regular pencil or usually the blue pencil. And the blue pencil is, what was I going to say? Um, Non-photocopy, which means you can copy it and the blue the blue lines should not come out, hence the blue line paper. So here's your forearm here, curves in and you have that piece come out, elbow, there's always a point at the elbow and then that, that bone, that bone, that bone right here that comes out, see how that point is at the elbow and then there's a bone that, that runs along the elbow up into your arm. So you have that point here. And then you have your bicep, which connects to your tricep. What? To your uh, delt. Bicep to your tricep. Get on with it. So now, seeing this, I'm going to shift that head over more. Because this, this actually should curve in more because the arm is curving in. So I can bring that shoulder in more. Which is why I say always walk away from your paper. It's like if you're passing a basketball, when you're doing this, your shoulders automatically come forward. So if he's doing that, the shoulders are automatically gonna, gonna curve forward. So it should be about right there. The delt should be about right there. Because that back is curving. And it's actually coming in front of the chest, and then you hook up your bicep to that. And then here's your forearm right there. So if I penciled it, and I really want a darker pencil, basically a number two pencil would be nice. Which I have somewhere, I just don't have it right now. And this comes to that point for your delts, and then your bicep, elbow, and then your fingers. And I am looking in the monitor, and that's pretty good. I could probably drop this hand down more, because I've got the pencil. It's hard for me to see where it's at. Bring them, just bring them a little closer together. That's all I'm trying to do. So about like this, kind of like he's passing the rock, pass the rock. Space Jam. And then again with the thumb. Two pieces to the thumb. This curves up, this curves up. Here's your, your roundness. And when you look at the hand, You start out with a square. I mean, just doing, if I'm doing a hand, a quick hand here, I'll start out with a square right off the bat. Then I know to round it off here and here. Now, when you round it off, if you look at my hand, it's kind of like it goes up and then it comes down again. So it's, I wouldn't say it's round until you do something like that, then it's rounded. But if it's open a little bit, you're going to have the lowest point going up. This one actually is flat-ish, and then it curves over. So it would be kind of like this second finger, and then this goes down, that goes down at one finger. This is the highest finger because it's at the top of that hand, and it drops down and drops down, which makes this the lowest finger. But I always draw a square or a rectangle when I first start drawing hands start drawing hands when I'm when I'm roughing my hands so this my glasses are, is blurred and this is terrible light you see differently because my camera will get dark and it will get light and it will get dark depending on how I move my hand 
but my lighting, my track lighting is just shot. So we have this finger here, and this finger coming out. So we got one, two, and three right here, four fingers. These are the, the connections. Come up, a little piece up, and then out. This one we're going to come up a little bit more, and then out. And this one is going to, you, where did that finger go? This one you won't see too much. It's just going to come out because it's behind here. And I'm telling you, I cannot see that. You might be able to see that. I cannot see that from my, my, my vantage point. Change this one. Bring this down. I have to pencil this. I have to use my other light, which is this light right here, which you cannot see once I turn it on. So once I get all this rough, I'll use my other light so I can see more clearly because the rain is gone. I know you young cats are like, what is he talking about? It's an old song reference. One, two, three, and four. And because of that, I will do the three fingers or the three joints. And I'm telling you, I cannot see, and it's probably hard for you to see as well. Well, let me get this here and then I will. cut to the chase. I'm going to, since this is really rough, I'm going to raise that up because he's a little long. I don't want him to be that long. This is good. This is good. Too much, too much house going on because he's leaning forward. Never bear down with your pencil too hard because it's really hard to erase. Red anyway. I'm seeing if I can shorten it up a little bit more. Pencil. angle but you wouldn't be able to see it if I turn my table if I lifted my table up anymore all my pencil would roll off and then you wouldn't be able to see that work you wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing I guess this is the part where I should speed it up let me get the rest because I didn't think about having a speeded video up until now because there's no reason for you to see me do the little correction details. So let's get back to that. Do you have your 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 torso? I should have put the chest and so forth in there, but I knew the hands were going to cover it up. Here, this is the waist of the tuna can. This is this because I wanted it like that. So take a look at this. Might change it a little bit because I'm still not happy with it. But I'm going to walk away from it and then come back. But I want to get the main part first. And instead of putting the legs where they're even, like that, have one shorter one longer that way this one the shorter one looks like it's going more backwards where the longer one looks like it's coming more in the front a little drawing trick so the more I shorten it the more and narrow 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 it I narrow 
that's a hard word, like synthesizer. Two words for me that's hard to say. Narrow it out, if that's the right word. It looks like it's going backwards. And of course, you cannot have your feet on the same line as well because that's a, that's a no-no if you're going to have one foot back and one foot forward. And if it is bent, if a leg is bent, If a leg is bent, I'm not going to be able to see. I'm trying to get this because it just came to my head to show you. If a leg is bent, let's say this one, this one's going to be bent, this one won't be, or it will be. You'll see. You have your knee, and then you come down and you have your calf, and your other part of your leg, and your foot. Now, if it's bent, this part here is going to come up into this. So if this is bent, you're going to start this part up in here somewhere. And then you have your foot. And that gives you that bent look. But if everything, if you see your knee all the time and then your piece comes down here, it won't look bent. So if I... Can't erase that. If I take this, let's see if I can do it with a magic marker without messing up, and then come here. So my knee is going to be here. So my calf is going to be way up in here somewhere, like that. And then my foot, like that. It gives you that bent because the calf is way up there into the into the leg. Another part. Another little tip about same thing with arms. He's looking a little fat, but I'm gonna work on him in speed motion. So let's take this away, which is what I was doing. Wasn't bent enough. Bend it. How long is this video? This video is getting long. One day I'm gonna do a 10 minute video. I promise. And if we have to draw through, draw through as in draw into the line and just erase that. Like that, and that makes it, it gives him that stepping forward, leaning on that back leg kind of look. He is fat. I should have done the whole torso first, but I didn't, and blame it on the rain. Another song. So, let me check that monitor. Okay, I like this. This is still a little long to me. It would be easier to bring the legs up than it would be to change the hands and to bring all of this down. So, my view, my angle and your angle are two different angles. So, if I look at the monitor while I'm drawing, what I have to do is lift this way up. Same thing, if you're bending over, if, if something is bent over, then I can't explain that because I don't have anything in my grasp that you can see how, what I'm saying. Something's going to go behind it. Now I need my torso, my hips up here. Same way that this leg went up in there. This this house, and I already showed you that. This upside down house has to go behind this as well. So it's not going to be all the way down like this. It's going to be really short. much better. I stopped and looked at it in the monitor. So now I have to change the legs. Which I said is easier to erase your legs than it is to have to 
change more detail. The, the less detail you have, the less detailed part of the drawing, the easier it is to recreate it. So of course, I want him to crouch down more because that leg got really long. Let's do this real quick. Turn it into the speed drawing, fixing it. And then we got it. Into the leg like so. Calf. To the point of the calf. Coming down. And here's your foot. Like that. And I'm going to correct this by moving this guy over a little bit more. He's still chubby. I don't know why. He's kind of chubby. So we have this one here. This is in. And it's almost following the same line. Almost, but it's still good. Like that. I shortened him, which is good because he's bending over, but for some reason he's still chubby. Fix it in the wash. I need a number two pencil. Huh. Let's narrow his hips. Narrow the house of the tuna can. And that's a little better. So this is the line. So the stomach is going to come up here, through here, and down here. So what we have is this. We're going to move the love handle right here, which is the oblique. Comes in the oblique. Down into the crotch. And then the leg. Now, if you watched my last video, this has nothing to do with drawing. If you watched my last video, turning the stick man into a real man, pretty much, I forgot what the title was. They demonetized it. YouTube said it's not suitable for all audiences. I'm like, how can you not have a stick man drawing and that's not suitable for all audiences? So, you know, YouTube's tripping. Tripping! You hear me, YouTube monetizer people? Y'all are tripping on that one. It's a stick man. What was no breasts or no no booty or no nothing like that? But you know, they usually fix it in a day or so. But what if I had like a million views in one day? I wouldn't have got paid for that because they're talking. Uh, you know, it's not suitable. Come on now, let's drop this down because he's leaning over, and I'll give him a little bit of neck at that point. So. There you have it. That is your your basic Goku type Kamehameha wave. No, that's not the. Is it? I don't know which what what, what blast that would be. And I'm going to go ahead and ink this, fix these hands, and do a speed drawing. And you listen to a little beautiful music while I'm fixing it, so that this video won't be an hour of me trying to finagle it. So let's go to. The speed drawing.
And there you have it. After a day or so, I got it down. Um, I was going to put a background to this, some kind of uh, um, Super Saiyan kind of light up background to this. Maybe I'll do something in, in Photoshop for the thumbnail, but I'm not because it's something I want to show you about the arms. And something told me to do this because there's probably somebody that really needs that. Because uh, when you bend an arm, and I'm using this this little dummy here here, when you when you bend an arm, hopefully I can explain this. You're going to lose something. You have your your delt, your bicep, and your forearm. Now, when you bend this arm up, if I can get it in camera range, you're going to lose part of that back of that arm. You're going to see that because this is going to cover it. So this is what you have here. You're going to basically, you're lifting this one arm and you're bringing it in front of the other. So you're going to miss it or you're, going, you're not going to see that. You're, you're going to see the forearm and the um, deltoid. So that's part of, um, I can't think of the word right now. It'll, I'll put it up on the screen. And kind of the same thing with this. When you, when you bend this arm down, it'll straighten out, straighten out. I've got him sitting on my shelf. He's just sitting there basically collecting dust a lot of times. That's what I'm going to give him away eventually. So as I say, when you bend an arm up, you're basically going to, you're going to put something in front of something else. And then there's a point on the elbow that I'm saying here. So, yeah, I, I, I may have to do another video on, I think I should have enough videos on foreshortening. Or maybe not. Maybe, maybe I can explain it a little better now and then do another video on it so yeah whenever you bend an arm and this is the teaching part this is where the teaching part comes in this is why my videos get so long sometimes where's my brush where's my brush what am i saying whenever you bend an arm you have your your delt your bicep tricep and then your other your forearm down here so when you bend this arm up it's going to come up let's say put my hand right here so my hand like this that arm is going to come down into the end of this part. So you have this part and it ends right here. This part is going to be actually in here. That circle, this is why I say do your shapes. The cylinder circle is going to be here, not here. When you bend it, it's going to be inside that arm like that. So hopefully that little two second explanation can explain what's going on. And then again, like I said, if I draw the hands, I'll start out with that little square and then just stick fingers, add the fingers to it, and then you come back and try to detail it. So that's going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And maybe I will do some off camera, some background, maybe not, and then put it up for the thumbnail. So again, as I said, this guy here, he's been with me for about two years now. I did a video on him when I first got it. And I did a second video uh, a year after the small, slight, minor problems I had with it. And it's been getting dirty because I'm putting it on a drawing table and it picks up dirt and so forth. So I'm going to give this guy away eventually. As I said, don't start writing in. Uh, I'll let you guys know. I have to get me another one first and then I'm giving this guy away. So good luck to all you guys. Pray about it. Hopefully you win it. All right. So into this video. Talk to you guys later.